Good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to the webinar. My name is uh, Jim Keach. I'm President and CEO of Ontario One Call. It is noon. Um, I think I suggest that we wait about a minute and a half um, just uh, for some latecomers um, to um, log on, and, uh, and then we will start. So um, just pause here for uh, about 90 seconds. Okay, I think we will uh, we will get started. And as it's two minutes later than uh, when I uh, first welcome everyone, I guess I should say good afternoon, everybody, and uh, welcome to our uh, webinar today. And um, particularly, I would um, would like to uh, extend a welcome to a number of different stakeholder groups. Uh, first off, infrastructure owners, um, as well as excavators, uh, LSPs, locate service providers. And also to uh, to government, um, I realize that uh, there are a number of different uh, people from a number of different ministries uh, of government uh, listening as well today. And uh, finally, and by no means least, to uh, a number of the board members of Ontario One Call. So just uh, welcome everybody uh, to the uh, session today. And um, just uh, briefly uh, touch on um, who is going to be on the panel today. And um, as I said, my name is Jim Keach, uh, President and CEO of Ontario One Call. I've been here now for about uh, three months in this role, which I am enjoying quite a bit. And I'll just let you uh, quickly look at the other members of the panel who will either be speaking today or answering questions at the, uh, at the end of the session. So we are here today to talk about um, really the journey that we are going on here or going through here at Ontario One Call from that of service provider. And I know quite often it's referred to as call center, although we don't take a lot of calls anymore, obviously, to a service oriented regulator. And you know the timing of this with the, uh, the finalization of the regulation, um, on, I think it was February the 2nd, a little uh, uh, a little over a week ago is really the start of a number of different communications that we are going to be doing at uh, Ontario One Call, you know, talking about the changes and particularly uh, talking uh, about the new legislation and the regulation. And I, I quite often like to do this um, at the start of a presentation, just um, indicate, um, you know, some of the high points that I would like people to uh, to take away from today. And I think there are three in particular for today's session. So the first one um, is that we are not going out April 1st when the regulation comes into effect in issuing $2.5 million in fines to infrastructure owners. And the $2.5 million comes from um, just the number that you know we at Ontario One Call have uh, heard being uh, uh, mentioned a number of times, uh, not actually sure where that comes from, uh, but there is no goal, there is no direction for us to do that over the course of this year. So as I said, definitely not doing it April the 1st. Um, it, it actually will be a number of months before we get into issuing um, APs, um, but uh, you know we're, we're not looking for a total anywhere near that amount over the course of this year. Uh, the second one, and this may come as a bit of a surprise to a number of uh, people on the call that I'm even going to say this, but it surprises me um, really the, uh, the misunderstanding as to what we do here at uh, Ontario, uh, at Ontario One Call, but we do not do locates. And again, I'll get to that uh, a bit more when we talk about just exactly what we do. 
But uh, probably more importantly, um, you know, for this slide, I want to talk about collaboration, uh, talk about support uh, that we look to give members, um, excavators, uh, locate service providers as we, um, you know, go down this, this journey. And uh, when I say collaboration, I want to get across that we at Ontario One Call very much want to work with you, uh, you know, not against you, but work with you as we, you know, head down this path of making locates more timely for everyone. And when I say collaboration or working together, you know, I think that's important if you look really at what our main goal is. You know, the main goal of all of us should be safety. And, you know, when I say safety, um, it, it's not just, you know, the, the, the people doing the excavation. So the lady, um, you know, working the backhoe or the, you know, the person in the trench or the inspector, or, you know, even the, uh, the uh, uh, member of the public that may be on the sidewalk or across the road and I think today when we talk about safety when we talk about critical infrastructure and how dependent people are on it you know you could be on the other side of the city or the province or the country because you know we've really seen with some things that have happened over the last little while you know when you you have an infrastructure failure and you know that could be from a number of different causes including you know a dig in it can really impact people, um, you know, as I said, not just in your community, but um, but really um, across the country. And I think at the end of the day, you know, none of us want to be responsible um, for, you know, a situation that could put anybody's life uh, in in, uh, in danger. And I, I just want to pause for a moment because, um, you know, at the, at the conference that a number of us were at last week, we heard Doug Lapp talk about the 20th anniversary of the, the Blur Street uh, incident. I know nobody wants to see that again. And I think a lot of us are aware of, uh, you know, a situation going on in Orleans today. Um, very, very little details at this point, um, and you know, not really clear as to uh, is it just um, um, infrastructure damage. I realize in a new subdivision, or were there some serious injuries of which we all hope there isn't. So again, just reiterating the responsibility that we have, and really what our main reason is for being here, and that is a safety for everyone. So um, a couple things I want to do during the presentation, and one is just a little bit of the history of Ontario One Call, and I think it's uh, important. And, and again, um, you know, my comment about uh, we don't do locates, but I think there's quite often a misunderstanding as to what we do at Ontario One Call and kind of what our background has been. So the organization was actually formed back in 1996, and I'm guessing that a lot of people um, either weren't aware of that or forgot about it, but you know, just a, a handful of the current members actually were involved in setting up Ontario One Call. And probably, you know, most of us became familiar, aware, or started working with Ontario One Call 2011, 2012, uh, you know, with the infrastructure that we, uh, or sorry, with the legislation that we are under that has recently been amended uh, in Bill 93. And at that point in time, that's when, you know, mem a number of the infrastructure owners actually became uh, members. And, and I realized also at that time, not everybody uh, did it willingly, but um, you know, that, that was probably the most significant event. And Ontario One Call has remained more or less the same, um, you know, a service provider or often referred to as a call center up until uh, really right now. And, and the right now goes back to the date that I said, I think it was February the 2nd. So we had the uh, legislation uh, that was passed in 2022 uh, Bill 93 obviously uh, impacted the legislation that uh, Ontario One Call was under, in addition to the uh, Building Broadband uh, Faster Act. And I mention that because, you know, on a go-forward basis with the uh, the new regulation, we you know we are here to uh, help facilitate locates, uh, you know, making them faster for everyone. But a particular focus will be on the uh, province's priority projects, such as the uh, broadband. Uh, the transit and and now the housing, you know, in in addition to the work that all of us are doing. So again, um, you know, jumping to uh, to the regulation, and it did take a bit of time uh, between when the bill was passed and the regulation was finalized a week or so ago. And I think the you know the good thing now is um, you know it it allows us to focus on the issue at hand, and it takes away a lot of the questions. You know, is the is the regulation going to be postponed? Is it going to be dated out a year or two? Now we know uh, what we're dealing with, and you know, uh, one of the things that we are here today is to talk about how we actually are going to do that at Ontario One Call. 
So the, um, the next slide looks a little bit, again, at what we do at Ontario One Call, and maybe I should say what we have done, because again, that is changing. And um, you know, th this is a relatively simple slide, and I don't mean to downplay the effort that goes on by the uh, the agents here at One Call to uh, to make this happen. But you know, simplistically, we get a request. Now, over 90% of them are web-based. There are still some phone calls today. The majority of the phone calls are looking for details, uh, or you know, trying to help uh, solve some issues that may not be done uh, by web request. They're reviewed by the agents. Uh, you know, it looks at uh, which of the infrastructure owners need to be notified and a notification goes out. And then the infrastructure owners are responsible for the locates. And again, I'm emphasizing that. I'm sure most of you realize that, but uh, I, I do find it fascinating how many people think that we actually are involved in doing the locate. So I think what everybody is interested here today is kind of where we're going as opposed to where we've been. And the next slide really looks at that. And you know, the, it talks about the future, um, you know, it talks about governance, uh, compliance, and I want to tie this slide into something that the leadership team, with the support of all the management, have done at Ontario One Call, probably starting late last November, and that was to put together a business plan, and, and I view the business plan as really a roadmap to help get us through the change that is upon us, and I think it's important for everyone at Ontario One Call, again, it provides some direction, but I also think it's important for stakeholders to realize just what the area of focuses are or the areas of focus are. So there were two areas of focus, or sorry, four areas of focus, four buckets, you may call them. Um, the first one I think is obvious, safety. We talked about that already. The second one, and just gonna to touch on this briefly, is organizational excellence. And that's really looking internally at Ontario One Call. I know when we talk to a lot of infrastructure owners, um, um, excavators, whatnot, they would like to see us improve in what we do. We're aware of that, and we have our commitment that we are going to do that. So a focus on just you know being being better, uh, providing the service that you're looking for, and being an organization that will be respected by all. The other two areas are governance and compliance. They're going to talk a little bit more about them. The compliance one is one uh, I'm sure most members are uh, or most people on the call. Are the most interested in but i think it's it's important that you're also aware of the governance so as a result of uh, the um the bill 93 that was mentioned and also some other legislation that has recently passed a significant change in the governance of ontario one call now when i say governance i'm not talking about the provincial government i'm talking about our own governance um you know mainly with the board of directors currently the board of directors is made up of 16 members of the board of which 12 are to be infrastructure owners. So, you know, municipalities, um, LDCs, uh, communications companies, gas companies. That's actually going to change, and we are in the process of doing that. So the total number of board members will be 12, and it will be made up of four infrastructure owners. So, um, you know, going from a number of 12 down to four, four uh, excavators, and four government appointments government appointees, so members that are appointed by the uh, by the ministry. And currently we have two of them and we will be getting two more before the uh, AGM in June. So that's the first significant change. Um, in addition to that, um, we have a bylaw, it's called bylaw three here, that really um, sets up how the board of directors function, board of directors function, and how the overall governance of the organization works. That is going to be completely rewritten. It's out of date and with some of the changes, it also needs to be changed. We also have an MOU with the, um, with the uh, ministry and we are in the process of actually redoing that and finalizing it. And the other point just to make, uh, you know, we've, we've always been very much like an AA administrative authority, um, like TSSA and ESA, and it is now formal that we are an AA uh, with the ministry. So again, um, I think some uh, pretty significant uh, governance changes. I think uh, some of these are just because of uh, perception as to how we uh, functioned at Ontario One Call and uh, you know the ministry as we went through the changes. A lot of it focused on compliance. Also felt there had to be a revamping uh, of, of governance. So um, I, I will leave that and uh, talk to compliance. And again, um, I, I know this is the area that uh, there's a keen interest in the uh, the rest of the presentation is going to function on and I just want to touch on a couple of high-level comments so 
The first one I mentioned, and I'm going to repeat, uh, you know, on April the 1st, we're not going out uh, and issuing $2.5 million in fines. It's not our intention to do that over the course of the year. Yes, we have the tool of the administrative penalties, and, you know, it's something that probably we're unfortunately going to have to use over the course of the year. But we're not sort of sitting here waiting for April the 1st so that we can go um, issue administrative penalties. You know, we want to work with you. We want everyone to get better. Uh, we want to we want to show improvement and uh, use that as a uh, as a last resort. So as I said, uh, looking at uh, getting better, showing improvement, we want to work together. We want to be able to demonstrate improvement on a monthly month over month basis by the end of the year. There's four areas that we are going to focus on uh, over the remainder of uh, 2023. The first one, and, and this is probably obvious, reducing late locates. The second one is reducing locate requests come in where there's no intention of actually going out and doing an excavation within the 30 days that uh, that you're supposed to. Um, the third one is you know really looking to eliminate that and is uh, digging without locates. And the other one I touched on briefly is a focus on priority projects. We intend to start clean as of April the 1st. We will be issuing warnings, uh, you know, working, looking at working with you, offering education, um, and, you know, just working together with everyone, trying to get improvement uh, between now and I would say the end of summer. Once we get into the fall, though, we will look to use the administrative penalties where there has been no, um, you know, demonstration of improvement or willing to work together or willing to make improvement. And really, we're going to focus on the, uh, the worst performers. So what are we going to look at in that? Um, you know, it, it's going to be situational. It's not going to be based on a formula or a number of days, be it five days late, 15 days, 30 days. Uh, it's going to be looking at every individual case. Things we will take into uh, account will be safety and risk. Uh, also, um, you know, uh, the, uh, the financial side of things, the business side of things, both from the infrastructure owner and the, uh, the project owner that's looking for the locate. Um, so the business impact. So that's just a very, very high level. Um, I'm going to uh, turn it over in just a second here to others who are going to uh, take you through the, uh, the more details that I know you're interested in. So uh, again, thanks for joining us. And uh, I will uh, uh, come back and make a few closing comments at the end before we go to questions. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you so much, Jim. We really appreciate that. That was a great uh, setup for everything we're about to talk about now. So hello, everyone. My name is Ian Simpson. I am the Director of Industry Engagement. I'm going to talk about a few things here, and then I'm going to pass it over to the Head of Compliance, Ryan, um, who's going to walk you through more details um, uh, throughout this and, and provide more collaboration and support for you and show all the avenues we have. I just want to emphasize some of the things that Jim was talking about. Um, just 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 to really highlight it to make sure it really hits home you know Ontario one call is here to support and collaborate we can't say that enough we're here to support and collaborate we need to change industry performance and industry performance has a whole bunch of different aspects late locates is an industry performance that we have to affect we need to stop people from digging without locates we need to reduce ticket dumping and we need to make sure that vital projects in Ontario continue to move forward. They have to move forward. Now, the journey of this webinar that we're going through today is to make sure that we are creating awareness. We want people to become aware of the changes and what's out there. Um, as we progress through this webinar, we wanna provide educational opportunities so that you can learn different aspects of what these changes mean, um, what roles you play, how you can uh, participate and be uh, even better going in the future. And then we want to make sure that we provide you support and additional information so that you can do learning on your own. So throughout this webinar and throughout the question sessions, which we're going to have at the end here, um, we'll, we'll make sure to, to highlight some of the resources that are available to you. Now, as stakeholders, as Jim said, we all have a vital role to play. Um, we're all pieces in a puzzle. Um, Ontario One calls a piece and all the stakeholders hold a piece as well. Um, as Jim mentioned, we do not provide locates. I, I'm, again, I'm not sure why that is out there in the universe, but Ontario One Call owns um, the locate process, the request process. And 
you know, our piece of the puzzle, um, I can tell you, and this is uh, coming from leadership, we talk about it every day, is that we as a company are committed to improving the process around locate requests. There is a uh, dedication um, and a philosophy um, that we have at one call that is continuous improvement. So we're continuously trying to improve. And we're here to support and collaborate in order to get that improvement going. Now, as to the other pieces that are happening out there um, that contribute, infrastructure owners. So infrastructure owners are um, the player who owns that locate piece, the delivery of locates, the hiring of locator or locator supplies, the training of locators, um, getting locates done in a timely basis and updating um, 360 feedback, which is vital. All those pieces are vital um, for infrastructure owners. Excavators, um, excavators control their projects. They manage their projects. Um, they know when they put their locate requests in and they wanna make sure their shovels and machines get in the ground at, at the right time and that everyone arrives home safely. Um, when it comes to our system, we have to make sure that excavators understand that they are the ones who are responsible for requesting locates when it's needed, uh, and to make sure that they don't put they're not put into the system um, when there's no intention of digging. So we have to eliminate uh, ticket dumping. So make sure it's put in with the intention of digging within 30 days. Then, uh, for all safety purposes, you have to wait till all locates are completed by the infrastructure owners. Um, and then once they're completed, look at the paperwork to verify, make sure that everything they put in request is, is also um, handled in the paperwork as well as the markings and are, 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 are valid um, and it's a valid locate request. There's no expiries that have happened. And then to dig safely. Each one of us play a piece of this puzzle um, and unfortunately, in the 10 years of our existence, some of the relationship between the process, the delivery of locates, and making sure everyone digs safely has been a little off. And we need right now, in order for the whole industry to collaborate, support, and be able to be more effective so that industry performance just um, increases. So a big change happened to us almost a year ago. So it was April of last year, and there was a law change. And this law was called the Getting Ontario Connected Act, or also known as Bill 93. This was a very important change to our law because it set up a couple of different things that were really important to the transition of industry performance. Um, well, number one is to remove the barriers of why there was uh, untimely delivery of locates. Another one is what Jim was talking about at the beginning, setting up a good governance of Ontario One Call so that we're set up for a continual improvement. Um, and then, of course, um, uh, lastly, is just to make sure that we have enhanced compliance and enforcement tools in order to make sure that the regulated community can be the best they possibly can be. Some of the major changes I'll just talk about really quickly that happened, because I know there's tons of different stakeholders on this call, and I just want to highlight it just in case the, you, know, you weren't aware of all the law changes. Um, some of the major law changes that happened last April were um, dedicated locator becoming law, which is one single resource that is now attached to a project to make sure locates are done on time, on budget, and to give that um, excavation company or project owner complete control of their project. Um, locate validities, um, have now a minimum requirement of being 60 calendar days. So every locate sheet that you receive should have a minimum of 60 calendar days on that. Um, ticket dumping was put in in order to eliminate ticket dumping. So never request a locate unless you have the intention of digging within 30 calendar days. Sharing of locates, which is a great addition. Um, so now excavators can share locates. So un there's no unnecessary need of duplicating um, locate requests in our system. Also, um, locate performance is now public av publicly available um, to everyone. It's posted on our website currently, which will show the public um, who is performing in what areas, um, so you can see where locate performance is. 
Another key crucial area was the possibility of financial recourse. So stakeholders like excavators and infrastructure owners can now receive financial recourse, so financial compensation, if the other party um, fails to comply with certain sections of our act. For example, a infrastructure owner can now seek uh, damages and, and expenses for um, someone putting in locate requests without the intention of digging within 30 days and excavators have the ability to um, seek financial compensation um, if locates are late and it causes um, expenses on that behalf as well. And finally, um, one aspect of the law change that happened with Bill 93 was the possibility of administrative penalties being put forward through Ontario One Call as long as we had a ministry regulation that was passed and that was passed two weeks ago. Now, that regulation, um, although it's passed, uh, becomes effective as of April 1st. And to walk everyone through, like this, this sets the stage for what's in the regulation, which I'm gonna pass over to the head of our compliance department, Ryan. Um, Ryan will walk you through the regulation and some important aspects that you uh, need to know about compliance. Ryan, I'll pass it over to you. Great, thank you uh, very much, Ian, for that introduction. I'm so pleased to be here to discuss this topic and the new regulation. Yes, I'm uh, Ryan McAfee. I'm Ontario One Call's new Director of uh, Compliance and Industry Performance. Now, prior to joining Ontario One Call, a little over a month ago, I'd had the fortune to work, uh, having worked with regulators and industry participants across many sectors, including alcohol and gaming, protecting retirement home residents from abuse and neglect, as well as most recently administering one of Ontario's environmental protection statutes. So through my career and my years in regulation, something I've learned uh, is this. Um, compliance is a collaborative act. Whether you're an obligated party or the person responsible for administering the laws, we all have a role to play in keeping Ontario safe. And our best outcomes, I'm certain, and I've seen in my career, uh, flow from thoughtful engagement and a willingness to collaborate. Next slide, please. Now, although administrative penalties are found in many provincial regulatory statutes, they are new to us at Ontario One Call, and they're also new to our regulated community. But what I want to say right at the top here is that some things at Ontario One Call aren't changing. So, um, as always, you can expect the compliance and industry performance team to continue to, pro to provide you with guidance, and education as you work to achieve compliance, we really see ourselves as being here to, to support you. And as we communicated recently, Ontario One Call also has a new uh, dispute resolution process. Now that is separate from the administrative penalty framework. Uh, more information on that to come. That's likely a topic that will need a webinar or a touch point of its own, but for today, I'd like to mention that some compliance issues may, fl may flow through the dispute resolution process instead of the administrative penalty framework that we're focusing on today. Uh, meantime, you're welcome to familiarize yourself with our new dispute resolution process by reviewing the policies and procedures on the Ontario One Call website. Now, uh, before we move on to the next slide, I'd just like to point out, because the context matters, that in general, um, as Jim had mentioned earlier, administrative penalties can be applied in two circumstances. The first is to promote compliance, and the second is to prevent any party from deriving an economic benefit from contravening the law. Next slide, please. So here's what you can expect from the compliance and industry performance team as we work to implement the new administrative penalty framework. Uh, first of all, is a clean start. So although we have uh, open investigations right now and every investigation that's happening right now will flow through our current state process, uh, the entire community, as Jim mentioned, uh, will enjoy a fresh start or a clean slate as of April 1st of this year, the date that the uh, administrative penalty regulation comes into force. So what this means practically is that we won't engage the administrative penalty framework for any contraventions or any compliance shortfalls that occurred uh, before April 1st. So today, uh, presently, we are still in uh, current state, um, proactive and proportional. In keeping with the code of conduct for Ontario One Call compliance personnel, which is also a resource that's available on our website, 
the compliance and industry performance teams uh, work will be proactive, meaning that industry performance data, the data, will be the primary driver to trigger our engagements with you, including deciding whether or not an investigation should be initiated. Now, this approach is a little bit different from other regulators who rely more heavily on incoming complaints to trigger investigative work. And that's not to say that we're not, uh, that we don't have a view to investigations or to incoming complaints. We do. Uh, but uh, just to emphasize that uh, it's the data, the performance data that will be driving uh, our work as we move forward. Now, proportionality means that our decision making is based on an assessment, an assessment that takes factors like impact and history of good conduct into consideration in deciding the best intervention for a particular compliance matter. So practically what that means is that you can expect a lighter touch and fewer interactions with the compliance team when your conduct is proactive and effective in terms of staying compliant. And improving sector performance. Um, something you should know about us at the Compliance and Industry Performance Team is that we really want to see you succeed. Your success means that excavations are happening safely, that complex construction and infrastructure projects are unfolding in a timely way, and people are getting home safe at the end of the day. When infrastructure owners and excavators who have previously struggled to comply with requirements finally do achieve compliance, that's a success that we celebrate here in the compliance team. Almost everything we do in the compliance and industry performance team is intended to directly improve industry performance. Next slide, please. Something that's often missing from conversations about regulatory changes, like the implementation of a new administrative penalty tool, is this. While it's true that infrastructure owners and excavators need to be compliant, as the regulator, Ontario One Call needs to be compliant with the Act and regulations too. And our job is to be effective at administering and enforcing legislation that's delegated to us by the ministry. Now, while it's our goal to be a trusted partner and a collaborator through your entire compliance journey, that's us helping you succeed in all areas outlined in the Act and the regulations, rules and bylaws, I wanted to share with you and perhaps reiterate something that Jim had said already, the compliance and industry performance team's priorities for this year. Our priority is to see industry performance improve in these key areas. First of all, uh, priority projects. So effectively delivering timely services in connection to complex priority projects, including housing, transit, and broadband projects throughout Ontario. Reducing ticket dumping by collectively and collabor collaboratively uh, making the process around locate requests better and better. That's a nod to our continuous improvement ethos as well. Reducing digging without locates. This really is one of the issues that we see and one of the compliance issues that we see as the greatest public safety concern here at Ontario One Call and within the communities that we serve. And finally, I want to put some additional emphasis on uh, reducing late locates. Because in the compliance team, um, in our view, late locates are a leading factor and often the root cause impacting the other three priorities. For instance, um, late locates can increase the likelihood of a homeowner risking their safety and deciding to dig without a locate. Also, a uh, history of having experienced poor locate performance can lead to ticket dumping when stakeholders need to start a project on time and feel the need to request, uh, to request locates very early just based on their previous experience. Next slide, please. I'll kick off this slide by reviewing Ontario One Call's compliance toolkit. Uh, first of all is uh, providing guidance and education. That's something that won't change in the work that we do even after April 1st. Um, our work in, in terms of proactive inquiries, investigations uh, will continue and we'll continue to, moder to modernize in keeping with AP process, as well as the dispute resolution process. Uh, resolving compliance shortfalls through the, the dispute resolution process and that framework. Advising you of your rights, including pointing you to useful sections of the Act that will allow you to seek recourse independently. And then yes, as of April 1st, the uh, administrative penalties framework that will be authorized by the new regulation. So, let me move on to our commitment and our commitment to you is that you will never be blindsided by receiving an administrative penalty. Our approach to administering the administrative penalty tool is progressive, informed and guided by sound policy. So progressive in terms of our 
of our interventions. Um, and what I mean by that is that except in the most egregious circumstances, our first intervention will not be the issuance of an administrative penalty. Informed, when I say informed, what I mean is that the circumstances of every fact, fact scenario matter to us, meaning we will always take the impact of a compliance shortfall along with the obligated party's good conduct, including their history of compliance, uh, into account when deciding whether, whether to issue an administrative penalty. And our decisions and actions are guided by the code of conduct uh, for compliance personnel, uh, meaning that what you can expect from us is that we will do our work with honesty and integrity. And we'll move on to one final slide uh, in my section, please. There we are. Um, so before handing the presentation back to Jim, I'd like to share one more slide with you. In keeping with our ethos of collaboration and perhaps even transparency, uh, we want you to be aware of your rights should you receive an administrative penalty from Ontario One Call. You have the right to appeal any administrative penalty assessed against you. But if you wish to appeal the penalty, you must do so within 15 cal calendar days of receiving it. Otherwise, the penalty is final and binding. You should also know that appeals are not heard here at Ontario One Call, but instead appeals are heard at are heard through the independent Ontario Land Tribunal. Now, if we find ourselves in a hearing scenario, following, the hear following a hearing, the tribunal may confirm, revoke, or vary an administrative penalty. The tribunal can also attach conditions to its orders. We wanted you to have this information to guide, uh, to guide your conduct and to give you some confidence as well. So uh, thank you for your time. I'll pass the presentation over back over to Jim and I'll be back online in a couple of minutes for the Q&A session as well. So thank you for that. Thank you, Ryan. I'll, I'll, I'll just take one more moment here before passing it on to Jim. Um, I just wanted to provide some support uh, and useful tools um, and give some context of what these useful tools are. Um, we want to collaborate. We want to support as much as possible. There are tools available um, that we have which will help you and your organizations uh, continue to uh, be better. Um, and so we want to be able to talk about them now so you know where to find them, how to get to them, and some of the stuff coming in the future as well. The first tool I want to talk about is our education programs. So a couple of years ago, Ontario One Call has got started a journey of creating online educational material which people can take at their own time, own pace, um, and they're not stuck into a certain schedule. They can do it in their own schedule as well. So we have one of those courses which is currently available right now called the Professional Locate Administrator course. Um, can't speak highly enough of this, um, uh, more highly of this. Um, this course has um, really helped transform um, over 1,500 people who have taken this course so far and more and more are coming. This course is dedicated to helping professionals learn how to utilize our system the most effectively. Um, it will help uh, manage locates, make proper locates, understand what the rules are uh, for when you request locates and manage locates um, within our system and really help provide better performance tools for those who manage locates. On top of the Professional Locate Administrator course, we have a slew of new courses that are um, in development right now that will be coming out in the very near future for stakeholders. Um, they will be geared at a whole bunch of different stakeholders so that all stakeholders can understand what their obligations are, um, how to understand what the risks of their behaviors are, and how to improve. Um, so please stay tuned to more of those courses coming out in the very ne near future. Um, I also want to talk quickly about the rules and policies documents. Ryan spent some time talking about the dispute policy that we have. He also talked about the administrative uh, penalty policy that we have that talks about the appeals process for, for that. He also talked about the compliance code of conduct. There's actually a bunch of uh, materials online right now in our governance section um, that will help you um, in this new world that we're in right now. Um, one of those vital documents is called a rules document. This is a rules document for infrastructure owners as well as excavators. And it is a plainly worded document. And this plainly worded document combines um, everything that's in the law 
everything that's in the regulations and everything that's in our bylaws combines it into one document which is easy to read to help um, stakeholders understand what their obligations are in the law and how to follow them at the best of their abilities. And then there's other documents for rights purposes so you can understand the dispute process and how you can utilize dispute process if you find yourself in a situation where you need your voice heard and you've gone through compliance action. There's also a policy in place about our administrative penalty um, policy is what it's called. This policy explains what an administrative penalty is, how it, how it works, what's on it, um, what your rights are for appeals process, how to be heard, um, how to pay it, and a lot of different um, great information in there. Um, I, we're going to supply some links if they haven't been um, already put out there, but we'll make sure those, those links go out there so that you have them and they're available to you. Um, and then lastly, I just want to mention that Ontario One Call staff is here to support you because we want to be collaborative. We have a lot of departments that are open and ready to help support you to on your journey to be compliant. Um, you know, we have a, a, a dedicated um, department that is for training and education. We have our member services and client services that are there for infrastructure owners as well as excavators to help you be more effective. And we have a full team um, who is just devoted to dedicated locators. We have a dedicated locator team to help you if you want to go through that process of setting up dedicated locator. Um, we're here and we really want to support you because we really want you to succeed. succeed. Um, at this time, I will pass it over to Jim. And Jim, you can um, um, help close us off before we start taking some questions here. Great. Um, thanks, Ian. And uh, thank you to Ryan as well. Um, just um, I, I, I welcomed everybody at the start and I uh, was going to mention this and I, I skipped over it and just, just as uh, uh, interest um, and um, interest um, in the uh, session that we're doing today. And my understanding is there are about a thousand that actually signed up for the webinar and there are well over 800 um, uh, participants uh, listening and watching today. So obviously very important and uh, very timely. Um, so again, um, uh, thanks to Ian and Ryan for the presentation. A lot of information covered off and um, you know there's, there's going to be lots more communication from Ontario One Call uh, to everyone in the, uh, in the near future. We are um, about 45 minutes and I want to allow lots of time for questions. So I just, I, just a couple of comments that I'm going to, I guess, repeat or remake. Um, and you know, the, the first one, uh, we've talked about April the 1st, uh, that is when the legislation comes into effect, or sorry, the regulation comes into effect, I should say. And um, uh, I know Ryan made the comment, uh, it's basically a clean start from uh, April the 1st. I think it's important people realize that. But that doesn't mean we can just forget about uh, all the locates that, uh, that may be outstanding at that point. They obviously still need to be taken care of. But going forward from April the 1st, uh, we do want to work with you. We want to do this collaboratively. Um, we are going to be, um, you know, warnings, uh, sharing information through the summer. Um, but then as we get into the fall, uh, we, uh, you know, we are prepared to use the APs. And again, repeating what I said earlier, I think. We would view it successful if we can show measurable significant improvement by the end of the year without using uh, the administrative penalty tool that we have, which, um, you know, and, and unfortunately we probably will have to, and, you know, and when, when the occasions arise, we will use it, but uh, collaboration is, is what we're looking at first. So I think I, um, because of time, I'm going to stop it at that point and um, uh, turn it over to uh, others who will uh, quarterback the questions and, um, I uh, indicated at the start there are going to be uh, four or five of us that will be available to respond to questions as they are posed. So uh, um, in case I don't get a chance to do this at the end, I do want to thank everybody for uh, participating and uh, looking forward to uh, working with you on the questions. Fantastic. We'll just ask the uh, panel to join us now on camera. Um, and then we have uh, Valentina, who is our communication manager, as well as Jeff, our education and training manager, who will be going through the questions and looking at them and uh, will be posing the questions back to the panel.
Yes, good afternoon, everyone. Um, this is Valentina, and um, as Ian mentioned with Jeff, we are going to take some questions. We are already seeing them um, coming in nicely. There's a lot of really good ones. So I am going to start um, with a couple, uh, possibly for Jean or Jim. Uh, how will Ontario One Call use the funds collected by the APs? So I, uh, I don't mind starting on this, and John, you can uh, jump in. Um, so um, for this year, um, we basically are not planning on utilizing the funds at all at this point in time. If you look at the regulation, um, one of the changes uh, that was um, that was made before it was posted was in regards to the items that we can um, uh, actually use the funds for. Uh, when we presented our uh, budgets to the board back in November, uh, a conscious decision was made uh, to, to not um, plan for the expenditures of these, I think for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, we have no idea what uh, what sort of revenue we are going to see in that regard, so that's the first part. And um, you know, I, I think secondly, until uh, people work through the um, um, work through the APs, um, we get we get a better handle on it. The intention is um, not not to uh, not to be spending them this year. As I said, as, as far as what it is actually to be used for is detailed in the uh, in the regulation. Okay, wonderful. And I have another one. Uh, does one call have an AP goal amount? No, we do not. And I, uh, I mean, I'll go back to, I think one of the very first comments I made, and I don't know where this two point, um, you know, I said two point, I think it was 250 million. I, I was off by a factor of 10, um, was um, was bantered around quite a bit, uh, but that that was that was a goal. That's what we were trying to achieve. Uh, we, we have no set of, that amount and you know I, I go back to another comment I made you know if we could be successful without applying any penalties um, that would be our goal okay wonderful um, I have a few for Ryan actually um, people are very interesting to know um, how to dispute a penalty if they can appeal the decision so uh, disputes for the administrative penalty framework are conducted through the Ontario Land Tribunal. So the process is available on our website, but also something that we commit to you is that when we, uh, should we find ourselves, not when, should we find ourselves in a position that we are issuing an administrative penalty, the communications that we're sharing will also point out uh, where and how to, uh, to appeal to. Uh, so the draft notices that we already have prepared, uh, just so as we do our policy development work, uh, hopefully we won't need to use this, but uh, do indicate how to connect with the uh, with the Ontario Land Tribunal, as well as uh, providing information to uh, us as well at uh, Ontario One Call. Well, let me just reiterate that um, while this is a new compliance tool, no one will be blindsided by having uh, administrative penalty issued against them. What that means is that we've already been working together uh, for some time, except of course in the most um, egregious cases, that's a different thing, but uh, we are transparent, policies online and Ontario Land Tribunal. Okay, thank you, Ryan. I have another one for you. Sure. Um, who is enforcing this penalties? Um, are we using existing law enforcement? How are we doing uh, it? Uh, very good, very good question. Uh, possibly something that could have been a slide in my presentation. Uh, yes, yeah, so this is part of uh, Ontario One Call's transition from sort of a service or membership organization into a regulator. And being a regulator means that we're responsible ourselves for administering and enforcing uh, the legislation that, uh, that we're entrusted with, that we're delegated with. So what that means is that Ontario One Calls Compliance and Industry Performance Team are responsible for administering these tools. Um, when we get closer to the time of uh, April 1st, we will be appointing our investigators as uh, assessors under the Act. So as you're reviewing the legislation and you review and you see the language assessor, what does that mean? Uh, practically and in our early stages, that means investigators here at Ontario One Call. Okay, um, also I want to make a note for everyone because we are getting a lot of questions about 
uh, if the webinar is recorded and uh, where people will be able to find it, yes, it will be recorded. We will post it on our YouTube channel and on our website. We are also going to send a follow-up email to all the registrants and participants um, with the link where you can find uh, the presentation deck and the recording, as well as some other useful links um, that will point you to the regulation and the other compliance policies. All right. Uh, so, Ryan, I've got another question for you. Hi, everybody. It's Jeff. Go Chow. ahead. <laughs> um, uh, this one's actually also about dedicated locators, so Katie might also be able to help out on this too. Um, and it's mainly surrounding the non-compliance penalties that could face there. So suppose an infrastructure hire, sorry, an infrastructure owner hires a dedicated locator, and that dedicated locator ends up not performing. Uh, will there be penalties for non-compliance? Who receives those penalties? And how does that differ from other processes that we have? Sure. So uh, the short answer is that uh, the administrative penalty uh, regulation uh, includes only provisions for contraventions of the Act. So for dedicated locator, there are two contraventions. Um, I'm going to read them. Uh, the first one is failing is failure of the project owner to include information needed in the de dedicated locator notice. So that is a contravention for uh, the project owner. The second contravention is a failure of the infrastructure owner to agree to a locator or provide mapping. So there are specific provisions for this. Uh, what I mentioned um, earlier on that really bears repeating is that context matters to us. So there is not one thing that triggers uh, a certain intervention from us or definitely an administrative penalty from us. Uh, we want to understand the facts of every scenario and uh, listen, let me tell you that throughout my regulatory career, uh, there, no two fact scenarios are the same, which means that uh, our investigative team will do their due diligence in working with you and really understanding in order to assess, uh, in, in order to learn what, uh, in order to decide uh, what an appropriate outcome uh, would be. There's also the dispute resolution uh, framework that uh, will get some airtime, that is our commitment to you, uh, that may have uh, other outcomes as well, including uh, management discussions, the issuance of warnings, and an arbitration mechanism as well. But um, I think that's what I can say uh, as, the, as a new person, <laughs> uh, just a few weeks in. Uh, Katie, can I hand it over to you for some more content? Yeah, sure. No, uh, you got that absolutely right. There are only those two contraventions under the dedicated locator model. And the uh, essence of that is that the dedicated locator is meant to be under the control of the project owner, at which point the project owner and the dedicated locator are either working very closely together if they're separate entities or they are the same entity. Therefore, you control the time at which those locates are provided. Excellent. I can just... Uh... Sorry, if I can just, um, just as Katie was speaking, something did occur to me that might be helpful guidance uh, for, for those on the call as well. And that's, um, I'd mentioned good conduct and history, history uh, positive compliance history as well. And so what I would say is that if you think that you might be in a situation that you may be susceptible to a compliance finding, to an AP or something else, do a good job in, in um, documenting and recording your efforts uh, Sometimes in regulatory law, uh, outcomes really depend on what another party will do, and that party isn't uh, can't always do or doesn't always behave the way that you would wish them to. So do keep uh, do keep good records so that if you uh, find yourself in a position where you'd like to reach out to us to discuss a scenario, that uh, you actually do have some information to share with us. All right, I've got another question. I think Ryan. Uh, this also is directed to you, uh, and you may have already talked a little bit about it, but this is a good sure. opportunity to perhaps uh, add more if you wish. Um, will infrastructure owners be notified of late locates before being assessed to allow short time for review and dispute if the infrastructure owner disagrees with, uh, uh, with the assessor's understanding of the situation? Sure. So what I would say is while the onus is on infrastructure owners to do a good job in meeting the deadlines under the legislation is that um, when you uh, receive information from, or our interaction together with the compliance industry performance team will include data. So remember that we're triggered, our work is triggered by 
uh, data and performance uh, and a performance history, which means that um, no secrets. If we are speaking, if we do want to speak with you about compliance shortfalls, that uh, we will have information to share with you, so that we can talk about particular cases to understand the circumstances and not say a philosophical conversation about what what may or may not have happened. But I think I might ask uh, Ian to jump in uh, as well on this one. Yeah, no, I, I think I think you hit it, Ryan. I think, you know, uh, just to give my context of being in compliance before, um, yeah, you know, no, no matter what um, happens out there, uh, infrastructure owners will have the ability to look at their performance data, right? They have their performance data. They're the ones who own that, and they're the ones who put it into Ontario One Call's system. So really the responsibility is for the infrastructure owner to make sure that they have the proper programming in place so that everything does go into the Ontario One Call system and everything communicates effectively. Um, and then they should be able to have an opportunity uh, to look at that data at any time, that data set, um, so you have a good conversation with the compliance team before any action goes forward. And I'll just add that from a technological perspective, Ontario One Call is consistently um, evolving and bringing in uh, new platforms to allow members and locators to see their data, performance data in particular. So we're working on dashboards and other measures so that you can consistently stay up to date on your performance and therefore measure against that. Excellent, great answers guys. Uh, I have one, one last question on um, sharing of locates, which is something we cover in our professional locate administrator course. If uh, those of you who are on the call haven't taken it, I do highly recommend it. Uh, and this one probably could be answered by either Ian, Katie, Jean, Jim, or uh, or Ryan. So suppose uh, a subcontractor is on site and I as an excavator, I'm using my locate package. I share that locate package with that other subcontractor and they cause damage to infrastructure, not I. Either because they're digging deeper than what my locate says or um, some other uh, breakage of the law. Who is responsible, who is liable for that damage? Us uh, as those owning those locates or the subcontractor as the excavator causing the damage? Great question, Jeff. I don't know, Ryan, if you want to handle that or you want me to go for it and then you can jump in after if you like. Ian, uh, be my guest. I, sure. I will jump in afterwards. So so the, the, the law is pretty uh, clear in whoever is doing the digging is responsible right so once you have that shovel of machinery and you're actually doing the excavation it is your responsibility right so if you are receiving a full locate package from someone else you're sharing that locates uh, it is your responsibility at that time to make sure that you have valid locates that you've reviewed the paperwork that we've mentioned in previous slides that everything is completely valid and not expired and that your uh, team or yourself is digging um, in a way that will reasonably not interfere with or damage infrastructure. So the onus always comes down to the person who is digging or the company that's digging. And I know this is covered in the Professional Locate Administrator course. That was a good plug, Jeff. <laughs> yeah, no problem. I think the... I think I think the only uh, thing that I would add to that, thanks Ian, is that uh, if you do find yourself in a scenario, so I, I do understand the instinct, especially when there's a new tool to think about fact scenarios that uh, some what ifs, but if you do find yourself in a scenario where this is actually unfolding, please do reach out to us. We are uh, happy to discuss the matter because keep in mind that um, I'm sure a lot of the questions will have to do with specific areas of, of compliance, but our view in the compliance and industry performance team is not only to address um, actual cases of non-compliance, but also how to uh, improve uh, sector performance. So if there are opportunities along the way, especially uh, things that perhaps are not a formal tool under, under legislation or bylaws or rules, uh, that would be helpful. There is an opportunity for, here for us to innovate as well. So if there is a better answer, uh, there, uh, very often compliance is not the solution uh, to policy problems, uh, but we can be uh, a voice in uh, helping to improve um, performance across the board. Because uh, very often compliance is compliance is where is where the rubber meets the road, and we actually see how scenarios um, unfold. 
Thank you, Ryan. Um, I'll give you a break and I'll, I'll, I have a question that is more general, but uh, it's very recurrent. Uh, will there be a cost to request locate? There is no cost to request a locate from Ontario One Call's perspective. So Ontario One Call does not charge for locates, for a locate request, sorry. Perfect. This has been coming up quite a lot. Um, and then Ryan, I'm going to go back to you. Uh, can the penalties fines be administered to worker supervisors directly? So, uh, so the uh, administrative penalties can be assessed only against those parties that are mentioned in the uh, act or the regulations. Uh, so, what does that mean? It means that there is some specific language um, in the in, in the legislation that says who can actually be who can uh, issue an administrative penalty. Uh, order and who can receive one. So uh, depending on the depending on the exact regulation, it would be an infrastructure owner. It would be uh, I want to say project owner and DL as well as uh, excavators, depending on the actual uh, depending on the actual contraventions. And uh, it is the entities that uh, themselves who would receive the administrative penalty uh, triggering then uh, opportunity for recourse through uh, through the tribunal process. Excellent, thanks, Ryan. Uh, I have a question for Katie. Um, surprise! This one's sort of a two or perhaps three part question, um, and it sort of stems from actually a fairly simple question provided by a locate search provider um, uh, and friend of mine, actually. Um, so. Uh, they're asking mainly around 360 feedback tools. Uh, could you describe uh, how one gets access to 360 feedback? Where can one find it on the web portal? And are there updates? Like a, we had a reporting tool previously that was available. Uh, where, uh, what's in store for 360 feedback in the near future? Okay. So from a locator's perspective or from an infrastructure owner's perspective, you're asking? I just want to be yeah, clear. This mm -hmm. one's a, a locate search provider that's asking this question, but it will also pretty, okay. probably be helpful for an infrastructure owner as well. Yeah, okay. So 360 feedback is generally accessed through the web portal when um, a member or an LSP on behalf of a member is notified on a request. Um, and then you have a number of prompts that if you go into the web portal, you can um, uh, change your locate status for a specific locate request. And then in that lo in that 360 feedback there directly, there are a number of fields to complete. So it depends on what the scenario is on, on the locate. It could be cleared, it could be marked completed, um, it could be renegotiated, a number of things um, are, are as part of that uh, 360 feedback option. And then of course you can have, provide a close date if you have marked completed or cleared a request. Um, so then the recording tool, um, are you talking about training there? No, there, uh, I, previously in the previous iteration of the web portal, there was a reporting tool that both oh, members and Yes, not recording, recording, recording. recording. yes. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so if you need reports, depends on the kinds of reporting that you need, uh, you can contact Ontario One Call. Um, and we can work with you on various reporting op opportunities we have. But uh, as we mentioned earlier, I mentioned, we are working on a number of, um, when it comes to performance data, we're looking to um, make that public to the member and infrastructure and then the LSPs that are uh, responsible for certain um, station codes to be able to see their data exactly as um, it comes in. And then for the future, I think the main uh, change for the 360 feedback uh, is generally surrounding the performance data and data integrity um, within our systems. So the gist of it isn't entirely changing at this time. We still have some very specific needs that are required by compliance to be able to review whether um, a request was marked, completed, renegotiated, et cetera. Um, but there may be some compliance tools that are coming in the near future that help us determine whether renegotiated dates are accurate, whether um, the uh, requests that are maybe submitted in the system that haven't been cancelled in a while, but they could be cancelled um, post the work to begin date and things like that, just to help us better manage the enormous amounts of data in the system. 
Excellent. Thank you, Katie. That's a great, great answer. Um, uh, next one is up, I think, for perhaps uh, anyone to, to answer here. I'm going to probably protect the, uh, the individual who, uh, who asked this because they may be, uh, um, they, they, they may be uh, admitting to a, 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 a punishable <laughs> offense here. Okay. So uh, <laughs> we have an engineering consultant who sometimes requests locate so that their survey crew can use them for pre-engineering services. Uh, as of April 1st, are they still able to do this? They will not be digging with these locates. They find it more accurate than using um, the their existing planning processes. So locate requests in general are meant for excavations, right? Mm -hmm. So this is a, one of those um, issues in the system where if you create a locate request on which you do not intend to dig, that's part of our new regulation as I believe was mentioned today, so we do not encourage that. We do have a design and planning request that you can use. Um, now, it is the, true that not every member or infrastructure owner uses the design and planning process. Uh, we do encourage more infrastructure owners to sign it up for this, but at this time, we would not encourage a locate request to be submitted if no excavation is occurring within 30 days of the request. Uh, I'd like to, sorry, I'd just like to quickly add to that, Katie, as well. There is a process to do planning and design. Uh, this is covered by ASCE, used to be 3802, now 3822. That standard has just been updated. Uh, and if you're looking for a Canadian rather than American standard, uh, there is a Transport Association of Canada guideline that will walk you through how to get pre-engineering uh, processes uh, and so that you can improve your internet processes as well. Thank you, Jeff and Katie. Thank you. Um, I have a couple more for Ryan. Sorry to put you back on the spot. That's all right. Um, <laughs> so there's a few questions about how uh, the compliance departments communicate um, with stakeholders. Uh, particularly if um, they are informed about how compliant they are, if they receive they receive warnings, if they go below a, th a certain threshold. Um, how are the warnings or penalties communicated? So I think I'll actually ask Ian to start off with this one and then I'll take it after him. For sure. Well, we're in a we we are in a new landscape, right? At this point, right? And we are changing everything. Uh, but in general, um, the compliance staff really deals with the biggest risk risk and proportionate to what's out there. So you know, based on what they can handle and the hugest risk, that's where performance measures usually come down. Um, and then the compliance team will take actions uh, upon that, usually issuing warnings and getting the conversation started before taking any actions, which Ryan was talking about, whether it's an AP or whether it's, sorry, administrative penalty or dispute resolution or any of the other plethora of tools that the compliance department has. Um, now, that being said, um, even if you do not receive uh, performance uh, data, you know, maybe email to you monthly, um, everyone's locate performance is updated on our website every single month in our compliance report page on our website. Um, and that's available to all members and the public at all times so you can see where you are. Um, and that will continue going forward. All those records will stay on there. Um, that's part of the legislation changes that uh, came came in last year. Um, and then the compliance team will obviously look at that, analyze that, and work with Ryan um, in order to create more um, um, better performance. And we'll make sure that those who are at risk of, um, you know, anything that could be substantial in the near future, um, they will be communicated with by the compliance department. Ryan, do you want to add to that? Yeah, sure. I I, I appreciate that, Ian. In this uh, in this transitional phase, we sort of, we have our new life uh, with with administrative penalties as as an option being developed right now, and we we also have our current state. Um, but what I would say is maybe if I can draw on 
uh, some of my um, industry experience prior to coming, uh, or regulatory experience prior to coming to Ontario One Call, is that um, remember, remembering that you own your own compliance, remember that you own your own performance as well, that um, having practices and uh, internal controls in place so that you're not caught off guard uh, by someone in the uh, someone from Ontario One Call or perhaps a member of the compliance and industry uh, performance team reaching out to you um, do um, do have practices in place so that uh, you're aware of your own performance as well and there are uh, tools that Ian mentioned uh, uh, as well. Thanks, uh, just, just, uh, just, just to mention, uh, I think there may be some, I mean, I'm reading into that question a little bit, is there a threshold, a percentage threshold of, of um, you know, you're so far non-compliant, you're 50% of your tickets are non-compliant. Um, just to let you know that there, there is no threshold. Um, it is based on um, locate performance and the biggest risk and proportionate. Um, I don't know, Ryan, if you want to add on to that. Yeah, so 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 I have heard this question pop up um, a few times uh, in my short time here with on with Ontario One Call, and it does seem to be sort of a, a range of how many days until until Ontario One Call may uh, may reach out. Um, that I don't think that's helpful. I don't think that's helpful thinking as we transition into into our new into our new world together. And uh, standard locates are five business days. Emergency locates are two hours. Um, uh, so, the, so those are the thresholds that that we have a view to, and anything beyond that, we want to understand the circumstances that are, uh, or the barriers or obstacles that you have that are preventing you from achieving compliance. And it's um, just in my early time here at Ontario One Call, I understand that there are some that there are some barriers there that we need to be sensitive to. Thanks, Ian and Ryan. Those are that was very helpful. Uh, I think the next set of questions is going to be revolving around uh, ticket dumping. And this one is, question is from an infrastructure owner's perspective. Uh, what would be the recommendation from this group uh, for infrastructure owners to deal with excavators requesting non-start remarks, as in they've gone and performed the locate, uh, they receive a relocate, they show up uh, for that relocate, and no work has started, uh, whether that's instantly or for an extended period of time, but what should they do? Oh, I see. I see. Katie started, but Katie, I'm, you're, you're yeah, already I, there. I'm, yeah. I'm back. Um, <laughs> so I will start off by just saying first, I think that that's a very good piece of feedback for our compliance department. You definitely want to be, be providing that information. We've been asking uh, infrastructure owners for years give us the information you have so we can help um, so compliance would take it from there but I will also mention that we have a client services department that very readily works with excavators to help them a produce better requests whether that be producing fewer of them for whatever reason they're putting them in there in the multiples or whether it's clarifying some information on there whether it's how the addresses uh, look or whatever the map sizes etc um, and we have in the past greatly reduced um, some air, it, areas where um, excavation requests were being um, put in very inaccurately or could have done better. So I would most certainly suggest those two options. So compliance and our client services department um, are good places to start. And, and I'll just, just to add in um, a, a one other aspect is um, it is in our um, law change since last April that there is recourse for infrastructure owners as well as excavators on searching certain contraventions within the act. One of those being um, someone ticket dumping. So if someone ticket dump, they, they don't have the intention of digging within 30 days. If there's losses and expenses that happen for that, um, there is provisions where that uh, infrastructure owner or stakeholder um, can may either make an arrangement with the excavator for the the losses and expenses and if that doesn't work then there is a process which they can go to the ontario land tribunal and um, get that compensation so besides just ontario one call because you know that that is definitely an avenue to go forward and, and reach out to the compliance department but you could also receive financial compensation for losses as well okay thank you um, I have another one regarding ticket dumping. 
how will ticket dumping be monitored? Um, does, that, does that mean that if we input a relocate, we get a fine? So, Ryan? so, so let me start with this one. Um, I will say that I have uh, not yet turned my mind uh, personally uh, to uh, to the ticket dumping issue in terms of triggers uh, and the data that we have available. Ontario One Call that may give us some uh, insight. Uh, but what I would say is that um, conduct matters. So if there, so if there are, if there are um, factors beyond your control, please do document uh, the efforts that you're making in order to stay compliant so that we can, uh, so that we can have a sense of what, uh, of what you've done, what you are doing in order to remedy matters before there, there is a compliance issue or to uh, control for perhaps future uh, compliance shortfalls. And uh, technologically, we are looking at a number of uh, ways to get feedback and information about when locates are submitted and when they're resubmitted and getting some data to try help us track the information uh, and make sure that it's within the scope. If I can just, uh, thank you for that, Katie. If I can just say uh, as well is that um, I, I don't want anyone on the call to hear that there is a threshold for any area of the act that automatically results in the issuance of, a, of administrative penalty. Uh, that is not that is not the case. Uh, we our work is proportional, and we want to understand um, circumstances. So it's not you know day day five is one thing. Day six is day six <laughs> something is triggered. There's no uh, there's there's no logic in our systems uh, for that. That we review matters case by case and on their own merits. All right, uh, Ryan, this next one is for you. Uh, sure. Sorry to put you in the hot seat again. Um, how will warnings and penalties be communicated to infrastructure owners, to excavators, to, to the parties involved? Sure, so it depends on the circumstances. Um, what we are contemplating now is that um, uh, there, there are provisions uh, for service of documents, so typically by email or by uh, or by registered mail is how you will receive sort of your formal legalistic um, uh, notice of of, an, of the issuance of an administrative penalty. But uh, like I said, um, this is not our uh, that is not our first step. That is not our first approach. Uh, if you have if you are receiving an administrative penalty, that means that we've been working together for some time with a view to uh, improving performance. Thank you, Ryan. Um, I have another one for you. Will uh, Ontario One Call be posting uh, who receives APs in addition to the performance report on the Ontario One Call website? Uh, short answer is yes. Um, I had mentioned uh, during my speaking points that you know there are times when the uh, when obligated parties need to be compliant with the legislation. And then there's also times when us as a regulator, uh, we need to be compliant with the legislation as well. And one of the requirements on Ontario One Call for issuing or for posting information is for those uh, who have been assessed and issued uh, an administrative penalty. The, uh, there are timelines, so we will not issue or we will not post an administrative penalty uh, online until after the time of the uh, appeal process has elapsed. So uh, I mentioned that um, uh, if you received an administrative penalty, there's a period of 15 days in which uh, it's possible to request an appeal. So no order would be issued or, or would be posted online during that period. And if there is an appeal, we would not post the order uh, until the appeal has been, until the matter has, has gone through uh, the uh, Ontario Land Tribunal process. Oh, I forgot to unmute myself this time. Excellent. Uh, Katie, this question is for you. And I feel like you may have already uh, answered this a little bit, but I think uh, this person is looking for a little bit more detail. Uh, is there anything in place or is going to be put into place to stop multiple locate requests for the same area? For example, an excavator puts in four requests, one for each corner of an intersection, as opposed to one request for the entire intersection? Well, I think that is a case-by-case -case scenario. It would really depend 
on why the request is coming in that way? Are there different types of work or is there a specific need for that? So we're trying not to put in such incredible limits into the system that you end up not being able to submit things that the way that you require them as an excavator. Um, what I would suggest is if that occurs, uh, you give us an opportunity to look at that request at Ontario One Call to identify whether or not it could have been done differently based on the scenario that is presented there. So again, by reaching out to us either through compliance or our client services department, and by the way, that's solutions at ontarioonecall.ca, um, feel free to reach out to us and we will investigate that for you. But in general, right now, there is a uh, feature within the system that identifies to the um, individual submitting the requests that they have produced a request in that area in the last, I believe it's 20 days. So they can bypass it because again, we don't want to create such extreme limitations that other things are not possible if they're reasonable, but there are some things that flag it. Uh, should they go through with it, then again, maybe there's a good reason for it. Just reach out and we will be happy to look at that for you. Thank you, Katie. I have another one for Ryan. Um, we've been talking about uh, a clean slate, a uh, fresh start. So we got a few questions about what exactly that means. Sure. Um, with, with, with clean slate, does that mean that our previous good standing is also forgotten? Uh, no, um, we. When I say that uh, your previous history of good conduct is taken into consideration, good conduct is something that uh, we will always have that we would always have a view to. So, uh, so it's it's not that everything is wiped clean. Uh, what it means is that um, any that uh, any pr uh, potential shortfall, any current investigation that's happening is happening under this process right now. And then after April 1st, if it's a matter that is appropriate to flow through the AP process, only sort of those new things, uh, those new sort of circumstances that happen after April 1st uh, could possibly uh, flow through the AP framework. So so oh. continue so, so continue so continue with good conduct. There, there's there's lots of work that has to happen in our world between now and April 1st. <laughs> okay, great. Um, I have one for Ian about courses. Uh, has the Locate Administrator course been updated to include these new policies? I think we may have lost Ian. Oh, um, okay. I I can ask okay. something oh, different. I've got a. Uh, I have a. I think a uh, a uh, infrastructure owner and excavator. Someone who's filling both roles. Who may be a little bit confused. Um, they say last year emergency locates were free and now we are looking for a thousand dollars per emergency locate. Uh, they had storms uh, that wiped out 15 to 30 culverts, meaning 15 to 30 thousand dollars to get emergency locate service. Uh, would somebody like to clarify things for this, uh, this individual? So I'll, I'll jump in here to say that Submitting a locate request of any sort through Ontario One Call is free as a process. Whether there are infrastructure owners that may charge for locates, that is an entirely separate issue. And we would have to deal with this specific example and look at it for you. Um, but it, essentially, the, the Ontario One Call locate request is free. Yeah, I think the $1,000 comes from penalties where response to an emergency locate would be late and then only after Ryan's team has gone through their process is that correct yeah uh, okay. so so yes in the uh, in the schedules to or the schedule in the administrative penalty framework there is a uh, there is a penalty of one thousand dollars for uh, for late locates and that is for uh, any day or part of a day where the contravention has continued. So, uh, so one thousand dollars for th for that contravention. But like I said, there is no automatic process. Um, it is not a financial transaction for us. It is always a compliance matter for us to uh, address proactively with you. All Maybe right. I can add one thing, Valentina. Before before we move on, I think I think one um, important element of this webinar 
is that we wanted to show you that we intend to be collaborative and engage. And so I, I know if on the receiving end of a webinar like this, I would say, well, I just need to know, just tell me how this is gonna work. And so we're trying to be very clear with you that how this is gonna work is we're going to engage with you. There will be no surprises. There will be full transparency. And our goal is not to be a regulator onto an island by ourselves. Our goal is to be a partner in the success of the industry. That's our absolute goal. It's not easy to do because, you know, we were a service provider, we're transitioning, we're, we're becoming a regulator, so it's a bit tricky, but we will not be tricky. It's tricky for us as managers to kind of manage the transition of the organization, but we, we intend to be absolutely connected to you, and if you're willing, we're going to do better together. Uh, it's when you shut down that this becomes di more difficult for us. So if everybody's open and everybody kind of, you know, I don't want to be too kumbaya, but it's kind of like if we if we kind of connect and we stay connected, we're going to do better together. And that's our intention. And that's what we're trying to show you today. And I hope that in the way that we've engaged with you today and the way that the words that we're using and the and the and um, all of our intentions, are are very much directed to becoming an even more connected partner to the industry on a go forward basis i hope that that showed uh, but if you've got feedback for us that you didn't want to share as part of the q a if you've got some feedback just send us an email all of our emails are out there and and the websites you know obviously got lots of contact info so we'd love to hear from you. I mean, that, that, that really is important for us. We're going to get better at this if we hear from you. So, so please do that. And maybe I'll invite Jim to, to close, close up the, the chat because it's 125. Unmute myself before I talk. Um, so Valentina, is, is there many more questions? Yes, there are a lot of questions. Um, but we try to uh, put together some of the similar ones. Um, we could also um, respond separately. Some of them are very case specific uh, to the specific excavator or infrastructure owner. So we wouldn't be able to answer those in this format. So I, um, yeah, and it was more um, just so the, um, uh, you know, the people listening, are aware that if their question didn't get answered, we, we have them and uh, we will attempt to get back to you with uh, with a response. But uh, so it is uh, like two minutes away from uh, 1.30, so we're about an, almost an hour and a half uh, was our allotted time. So, we, so I think we should bring this to a close. Um, so I want to, first off, actually thank everybody on the panel uh, for, uh, for putting this together. Uh, I, I think it was, a great mechanism to uh, share information um, about what we're going through at one call, but really, what um, you know, every, everybody who is participating and and, and listening uh, to us today um, is um, you know getting ready to um, uh, to deal with. Um, it's you know th things things are changed or things are changing. I should say they haven't quite changed yet, but it's it's coming quickly. And uh, it's important that we we all share this information together. And, and there are going to be many more opportunities for us to do that. And just maybe reiterate very quickly what John said. Um, you know, we are uh, looking at working collaboratively with everyone. Um, we, you know, at the end of the day, we we want to get better. We want everyone to get better. Um, we want to do this on time. Uh, we want to make sure that people don't dig without locates. And uh, you know, I'll go back to. My second or third slide, and I, um, you know, talked about uh, why we need to be uh, collaborative and working together. And that's for the safety of everyone. And again, um, you know, I don't think we have many details, but I think everybody is very aware there was an incident today, and um, we want to do everything that we can, um, you know, from our part to make sure that doesn't happen again. And I think it's um, safe to bet that everybody on the call would have the same opinion as far as that goes. So um, thanks again for, um, you know, um, signing up. I realize uh, 90 minutes out of a busy day is uh, is a lot of time, so we appreciate that. And you are going to uh, hear uh, hear more from us. And uh, please, everyone, uh, be safe. Take care. Thank you.